woke up, I thought the uh, snow was done. Cause uh, my tent, it always looks like it's so sunny and bright outside. Like it, it's orange, so any light outside makes it look like the sun's shining, it's a great day. And I have my earplugs in too, so I couldn't hear the snow. And uh, it's coming down hard, so. I'm probably gonna go clear the snow around the perimeter of my tent just so I can uh, make sure there's still ventilation. All right, let's see. Oh yeah, I should do this first. Be careful not to let it in. There we go. I do need my snow paddle though. That's my... <laughs> my camp shoe as much as I can okay. here I guess let's get a good look at it first I got my winter wonderland yes so much snow though look at all this so this is this is the snow that I knocked off earlier right there all right time to get to digging I want to make sure my tent stays ventilated and that air comes in at the bottom there <laughs> A pretty good job to me. Just finish her off around the stake. Cool. So, my parents, I just texted them through my Garmin. No cell service here. They said that there will be snow all day today. So, uh, it doesn't sound like it's really going to let up. So, I'm just going to ride it out here, shelter in place. I have food, I have tons of water. Still haven't touched my water. So I have four liters plus a gallon. That's almost eight liters. Whoo! And other than that, I'm gonna go in here, get back to my tent, and maybe get some work done. I figured out a new way to dry my sleeping bag because uh, the condensation is usually the worst at the foot box. So it's got these little loops down there. I just hung it on up. It looks like my body's in like an extremely unnatural position. <laughs> but my legs are down here. All right, so I came back to Bill's place to see if they're open to charge stuff more and get something to eat and they are closed. So I guess it's back to the tent for me. Pretty beautiful day though. Decided to go explore a little bit. Heading up to the rail trail right now. Just to see what the area looks like from a little bit higher. Oh, I was just about to say I can't see my tent from here, but I barely can. You probably can't. But I see a tiny little bit of orange there through the trees. And that's my tent. And it's only orange because I just knocked off all the snow on it. Otherwise... It would be just a white little dome. All right, so let me show you a little problem I'm dealing with. My awesome blow up pad. I just love blow up pads. So dependable. Um, $200, over $200 for this blow up pad. And as I'm moving around, I hear this pop. And then, like I didn't think much of it. And then like way later, pop. It keeps happening and I'm like, what is this? I'm just, I'm not doing, I'm not doing anything crazy. I'm not jumping up and down on it. I'm just like, you know, doing things in my tent, moving around a little bit. And anyway, this is what happened. These uh, baffles, uh, they're just popping out. And now they're, popped out on this entire, this is the head section, it's down at my feet now, but this is the head. 
Um, it's just a giant freaking balloon. Like, how am I gonna sleep on that? Yeah, this is like the last time in the world that I want this crap to happen. But fortunately, it's not that cold. Uh, I think the low is probably like 24 degrees or something like that. The uh, air pad is not working out. It's like the baffles kept popping out, so like half of it pops down to here. So I tied, tried to tie some paracord to keep some shape, but it doesn't keep any shape at all. It's just a, a balloon past this point right here. I'm kind of just uh, trying to figure out an alternative. So I have this emergency space blanket. I think I'm going to put that under the foam pad, under, under the inflatable pad, and then under the foam pad, and see if that'll work. And then I'll also uh, put some uh, clothing under my butt and uh, anywhere else that contacts the ground the most. because uh, I can't sleep with this thing fully inflated. It's crazy. Are you kidding me? Um, pretty sure it's supposed to be all reflective. But it looks like the reflective came off. So... And make a nice shower curtain. Oh my goodness, this is ridiculous. <laughs> Are you kidding me? Wow. It's useless. Completely useless. <sighs> Man. Alright, so I've got my pillow underneath my butt blown up completely. And I've got a dry bag underneath my head so far that helps counterbalance the giant balloon at my feet uh it's partially inflated so there's still a giant balloon at my feet and some air in the rest of the air pad but uh not very much like i'm still touching the ground if i don't have these other balloons under me so i'm just like uh floating on top of three balloons right now basically <laughs> <sighs> All right, day two of uh, the winter storm. Let's see how it looks out there. I have no idea yet. I haven't even peeked. It's still falling a little bit, but not much. Flurries, it looks like. Uh, not too bad. I can work with that. I just hope that restaurant is open today. I doubt it, but I hope so. All right, so I knocked off snow on half the tent, but check out the other half. Would have been piled up really high if I didn't knock it off like three times yesterday. I mean, you can see the footprints like that's not even the very bottom, but day three. We'll see how it is out here. All right, so this is the aftermath. All this shook off, but I had a layer this thick on there this morning. Seemed to make it a little warmer actually, which is pretty cool. Looks like they came and plowed out this little drive area. And uh, I am about to pack up as quickly as possible and head to Paw Paw. I gotta get out of here, man. This is driving me crazy. All right, so I'm almost packed up. I got my pack over here on this little dry spot where uh, the plow truck dumped some salt, I guess. And uh, deep snow though, look at this. Doosh. Anyway, almost ready to freaking go. So sick of being here. I'm like running low on some some of my food items. 
I, I have a couple meals left, but I have no fuel to cook those meals. Anyway, I need to get the hell out of here. I need to get, I need to get the pawpaw. This right here is what I'm gonna have to look out for. Guarantee this was not here before the storm. Cause this is the towpath and the towpath is usually kept very clear. All right, so I've gone a mile and it's taken me 50 minutes, five zero. At first I was going one mile per hour, but then I picked up the pace a little. So I'm definitely not gonna make it to Paw Paw today. That's like 15 something miles. I thought it was 10 miles, but it's not, it's 15 miles. Um, I would know that, I would have known that the whole time, but my canal app isn't working out here in the Bermuda Triangle of uh, the Potomac. I'm not sure why, but all my navigation apps that normally work when I don't have service, they don't work here. Um, freaking Twilight Zone. Anyway, it's gonna be a rough day. It's gonna be a rough couple of days getting to Papa. This is totally fresh. I'm the only one, you can see, only one who uh, has come out here. It had taken all morning for my sleeping bag to dry, so I wasn't able to start hiking until around noon giving me only about six hours of light. After a few nights of terrible sleep, solitary confinement, running out of fuel, and getting dangerously low on food and water, the stress was starting to get to me. I was feeling overwhelmed and incredibly anxious. Slogging through the fresh snow was only exhausting and stressing me further, but this was a growth experience, and the weaker parts of me were dying off, a crucial part of a transformational journey. All right, so I made it almost six miles and uh, it's starting to get dark. And uh, while I have some light, I want to make camp. So I found this old lock house or ruins of a lock house. The lock is right here. And uh, I think if I set up camp down here, I will be pretty sheltered from the wind. Now, obviously I would not want to be in here if it was going to rain, but uh, ooh, as far as I know, oh, it's not supposed to rain. I was really glad that I set up camp here because I heard the wind howling vigorously all through the night but I hardly felt it at all. These old ruins were also a perfect safe haven from dead trees that could potentially fall. Home sweet home. So it's like 9.14. The sleeping bag is still wet from condensation. The whole top of it was really wet this morning. It's still wet, uh, still damp. The feet are always the most wet I guess that's where I sweat the most and that evaporation causes this um, anyway I got a new bag at Fort Ashby so it should be there right now I just have to go get it I can't wait for this to dry any longer it's gonna take all freaking day to dry and like it's not getting any warmer so it's it's just gonna take probably actually all day to dry I need a night off of this sleeping pad look at this Got my belt on here and paracord just to help prevent the more baffles from popping and to force more air into the rest of it because uh it may look like it's uh over inflated right now but it's not the rest of it is super deflated like i have to be perfectly balanced on it or my butt is on the ice underneath me or my leg in front of me will be if i'm out of balance to the front. So it's like all night I have to be like perfectly balanced on this flotation device. Like I'm out at sea and uh, and if I'm off balance, then I get dipped into the cold water. So I left just a little while ago, heading towards Paw Paw. I have one liter of water 
to last me uh, this 10 mile stretch and uh, I don't think there's any houses between here and there so um, fortunately because it snowed I have basically unlimited free water in the form of snow house I'm gonna see if I can get some water so no one's home took a peek inside just to see if someone was there the chairs are up on the table and they're uh Stove tops covered. It looks like they're uh, winterized or whatever. It's probably a vacation home. But uh, saw this faucet over here, and uh, it's off. Unfortunately, there's another one on the other side. It's off too. It makes sense. It's winter, so. Oh well. I wasn't expecting it, but it would have been great. Towpath closed. Maybe for you, bruh. <laughs> Before I'd be able to cross over the river into Paw Paw, West Virginia, I'd first have to go through the Paw Paw Tunnel, which is commonly considered to be closed, but hikers and bikers still go through it regularly. It's been described as an incredibly creepy tunnel with bats that sometimes bite people. Once I'd get to town in Paw Paw, I'd be meeting Jane, a truly kind lady from a local sporting goods store who happened to pick up the phone when my parents called them, asking about a new sleeping pad for me. She offered to pick it up from a different location and drive it all the way out to me from Cumberland. I would have called myself, but because I hadn't had phone service for days, my only connection to the outside world was my Garmin inReach, which only offers satellite texting. My parents also booked me an Airbnb to recover at for a couple days, so there was a lot to look forward to in Papa. Alright, so I found human prints here. So that's a good sign, that means I'm close to town. And I am close to town. Made it to the tunnel. Hey bats! Hello, any bats in there? Hello! I hope I scared them out. All right, I need to put my headlamp on, then I'm gonna continue on. Pretty cool though, huh? Into the darkness. Oh, I should put my hood up, just in case a bat attacks. All right, I am almost to the other side. This thing is way longer than it looks. <sighs> it felt pretty long, but not too bad. And here's the exit. Woo! Get out, dry land is not a myth. Almost there. So ready for this break. Hi, I'm Jane Stern from Cumberland, Maryland. And I'm just happy that I could help Alex and his mom and dad out today. Thank you so much. And what made you decide to help me? Just the phone call and your mom said you needed something and I happened to be the one that answered the phone and we were the only way we was going to get to you so it's never true. even a second thought. <laughs> oh, I told angel. your mom I was a Girl Scout and I have to do a good deed every day. <laughs> oh, right on. <laughs> right on. Alright guys so I just walked into the Airbnb that my mom booked for me and uh, I haven't even looked around yet I just came in and set my stuff down. Whew. Let's uh, look around together shall we? Oh man, pretty spacious. Oh, there's an upstairs too. <laughs> oh my goodness, this is awesome. 
Bathroom. Oh my goodness. Are you kidding me? Are you kidding me? Oh, there's like so many bedrooms. <sighs> My bathroom. Ah, the master bed. Just for me. Mm. <laughs> I'm so excited about this. I have two nights here. This is so nice. All right, so one thing that I missed on the tour was this gold mine. Laundry. Laundry. <laughs> Oh man, this is like, I'm in heaven, I'm in heaven. Comparing to where I was at last night and this morning and the past several days, this is heaven. I don't even know what to say. I'm just gonna turn the camera off, relax, maybe uh, edit some photos and stuff, get ready to edit video tomorrow. I have another day here tomorrow. I'm just, can't believe it. Very grateful, infinitely grateful. Trouble, stay away from my door. Trouble, stay away from my door. Trouble, go. My stay at the Hummingbird House was exactly what I needed. My mind and body needed some extra time to fully recover and adapt to the through hiking lifestyle. I didn't know it yet, but once I'd leave, I'd be hiking stronger than ever before, even though I'd be carrying more weight than ever before. Although Jane had brought me another air pad, I no longer felt that it was smart for me to fully place all my trust in those things. So I ended up putting together a winter sleep system that didn't require it, but I still brought the air pad along for a while just in case. My no air pad winter sleeping pad system was a triple decker sandwich consisting of a Thermarest Ridge Rest foam pad on bottom, my Thermarest Z Light foam pad in the middle, and a sheet of Reflectix insulation on top, which is something that bushcrafters often use by itself as a sleeping pad. The setup was significantly more weight than an air pad, but the assurance of knowing it can't pop, leak, or morph into a giant bulbous balloon was priceless. I still had about 10 more miles of Maryland left to hike, along the C&O, and then the ADT would be taking me off the canal and straight into wild, wonderful West Virginia. If you're interested in donating to my fundraiser to support veteran suicide prevention, click the link in the description. 80% of all donations go to Warrior Expeditions, a nonprofit that introduces veterans to the world of long distance adventuring, and 20% goes to Mission 22 a nonprofit that helps veterans in many different ways. And if you want to help support my hike across America, consider signing up for my Patreon. In return, you'll receive rewards such as early access to videos, access to my adventure journal, which is an in-depth account of my quest, photo prints, and more. And to follow my journey more closely, make sure to follow me on Facebook and Instagram, as I'm able to post photos and updates far more often than I can edit videos for YouTube. Thanks for watching. Take care.